it's a new system that has benefited Jim Williams on a couple of occasions. Getting that call up in the past, it would have just been a bye oh, should no. someone have Very pulled out. However, they're changing rules now. We have the reserve list for which Jim Williams once again a beneficiary of. 437. Jimmy Lequan, 101. Well, Jim Williams will have to watch his step here because Sedlacek is nicely poised. Level 16. The level things up. 85. And the door is ajar for Sedlacek to steal this one with a potential 13 dart break of throw. And that's exactly what he's done. Uh, so he comes in as number 16 and he will face the winner of this one. And as things stand, it will be Sedlacek who will be lining up tomorrow, but this is a chance for Jim Williams to at least get one on the scoreboard, albeit only a hold of throw. It's a vital leg, though, for Jim Williams here. Can't afford that double break oh, of throw, said the check would be a couple of legs away. 16. So he's got a little bit of time on his side now, Jim Williams. Leaves tops. 96. Mr. Dart in leg two on the 101 to hold on to his throw. Sedlicek stepped in and punished. Nowhere near this time in order to step in and do the same. Jim Williams, a handful of darts to get his first leg on the board. Games on the fourth leg, Jim Williams. As Sedlicek continues to lose his way, bang on cue. Williams goes wide with the first. Damage has already been done, though, in this leg, hasn't it, by Jim Williams. He's already got that cushion on the board. Three times... Carl Sedlicek, until then, finding the two Jimmy treble Williams visits against the eight of Jim Williams. He's wise clawing this one back. Big power scores. Time on his side here just to set this one up. 81. Oh, 123. Jimmy require 55. Shame about the last start, but he's given himself a shot if Williams does not find this 55. Two bites at tops, though, for a parity in this one. Yeah, and once Jonathan again, Williams only needs the one. And, uh, the situation facing Luke Woodhouse this weekend. He's on stage next against Vessel Nyman, who's certainly showing signs of life of late. A quarter-finalist the last time out on the European Tour in Budapest. That's the sort of match that Woodhouse could have done without this weekend. If um, if you catch my drift, I think there were certainly easier 95. options available. Oh, absolutely. One of the most informed players at the moment, Vessel Nyman. Interesting to see him up next. Throwing 100 averages for fun. 168. Yeah, good job he checked because he was told he was leaving 94 and he took out the 54. And Williams needs to find 153, which ain't going to happen. And Sedlacek, having been three from three on his finishing, and is still a very respectable four from six, he would fancy to take out double 20 as well. And he has done. Looks like that chase could be over. Carl Sedlacek, just two good visits away from getting the job done and booking a place in round two. Yeah, four breaks of throw in this match, but yeah, you always felt as though Sedlacek was. The one who had the majority of the control. He's down to a finish first on the Williams throw, and he he might 92. he might have a Three lot of room for manoeuvre as well. Six darts from here for Sedlacek. He might only need three. Well, he went for it. And he had every right to as well. Would have been some way to round things off, but will return looking at a very manageable 25. Has to be a treble. Like you said, the check six starts here to get the job done. Look at place in round two. Game shot. And he has booked a place in round two. And he finishes things off with a 14 data. A nice flow to our opening match of the day. Said Lachet racing into a 3 0 lead. Williams hitting back and that missed at double 16 for 4 3. Certainly proving costly. From that moment on, you always felt as though Said Lachet just about had the control. And our first ever match winner in our first ever PDC European Tour event in Switzerland is Czechia's number one, Karol Sedlacek. He takes it by six legs to four. Prevailed with an average of 108.7. Barney himself put in 1-1-2 that day as well. And Nyman, it's little wonder that he is producing these big, big averages right now because he's consistently finding these visits. And these are just devastating timing as well. 
Just doing a beautiful throw and rhythm at the moment is Vessel yeah, Nyman. Yeah, and a lot of that will come with the confidence. You're getting the results and it's all working. You just play with that freedom. It looks like once oh, again after 12 darts, finishing. he's going to be down to a double. Comfortable at all, is he? 80. Wesley require 40. If we can see that, so can Vessel. Games on the second leg. Yep, Vessel. and it looks as though there's very Vessel. little sympathy. You feel it's almost like a guarantee, an opportunity you have to take, which ultimately then you start pressurising yourself. 140. That side on shot of Nyman just accentuating that physique that he has. I mean, typically Dutch in many ways, isn't it? Very, very angular, very lean, very slender as well, and very right to left as well. Stays a long way over on the uh, right hand side of the hockey. Very Stephen Bunting style. Wesley going 107. But nothing awkward. I mean, it looks an ankle turner, doesn't it? But there's nothing awkward about the, the motion and the, the fluidity of the throw. 55. But there's plenty that is awkward about Luke Woodhouse right now in terms of how he's feeling and how that right arm is flowing as well. Six. So much lift in the throw now, engaging the shoulder. This is not good signs for Luke Woodhouse. Certainly yeah, with so line. much riding on this weekend, he will have a bit of a cushion in that final spot for the World okay. Grand Prix. I expect to see sort of high fives, low ones, whatever that shoulders engaged for Luke Woodhouse. That's loose. 439. Down to a finish on the Woodhouse throw as well after just nine darts. So, yeah, I think it's getting to the point now where Woodhouse, he knows, obviously he knows what's at stake, but it, it looks like he almost can't wait for this one to end and, and just hope and somehow pray that things go his way. 60. Yeah, you hate it being out of your hands, you hate relying on other results, but right now that's probably the best option for Luke Woodhouse because what's in his hands isn't working for him right now. I mean, he looks, he looks distraught actually as well, so this is um, not great to see. But, I mean, a credit to him, he's keeping on going here. I think... Had this been, I don't know, the fourth, fifth European tour event of the year, he might have called time on this by now. But yeah, Woodhouse, to his credit, is is carrying on where he wants to try and impose himself in some way. But there's very little opportunity because Wessel Nyman has rattled in a 15 dart. Interesting as well, our tournament director has just moved to the side of the stage as well, so maybe he'll want to have a quick word with Luke after this one reaches a climax, and it may yeah, well do so fairly soon. Just keeping an eye on Luke Woodhouse and this situation. As Nyman hammers in a third 180 of the match, and he is on route 66 to a 6-0 win. Been clinical and professional, hasn't it, Van Bessel Nyman? And it might be about to end. Yeah, Woodhouse could well be out of his misery soon. That leaves double 18. That's a long way away. First slips from Nyman, but the match is wrapped up in the end. Very difficult watch as far as Luke Woodhouse is concerned. Clearly, clearly not at his 100% fitness today. Clearly a big issue as far as the forearm is concerned as well. And it is a 6 0 win for Wessel Nyman. And I have to say that could be that as far as his World Grand Prix hopes are concerned as well. He can only now go backstage and sit and wait. But we, of course, wish Luke Woodhouse all the best moving forward with his recovery from this problem. There's a cheer again. I think every time Bruno hits something, there's going to be some form of a reaction here. Imagine if he takes a leg. Well, he's in position to get this break back. In position with time, six darts here, Ratajski not on a finish. Well, these are the opportunities that he simply has to take. No 
questions asked, really. He's only scored 25 with his first two darts. That's a bit more like it. Should be looking at the 14s here. Gets the single to leave 20 for tops. Get ready for the roar when this one goes in, Matthew. 54. So he's still got a bit of work to do here. He was looking at the treble 14 to leave tops, but. 46, Rooney required 20. Three clear darts at double 10. And listen to that. Break back, one apiece. Batajski only picking up one win in his last eight. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I saw him in Kiel and I commentated on one of his matches and I made the point that when he arrived in Kiel, he went there on the back of a really good couple of pro tours. He, he made a couple of semi-finals back to back, but yeah, you're right, lately he's not really pulled up too many trees. That's where you can just get a little bit of doubt, especially when you're playing a player that you'd expect to win and it's sort of a lose-lose situation here for Rutajski. He'd have been big favourite for this one. 41. Bruno, but this could make Bruno the big favourite with this crowd. He couldn't, could he? No, he can't. No stranger to a big finish, though. Did check out with the, the biggest of the lot in the World Cup this summer as well. Retires Geet, you feel this has to go. Double 18. Awkward. Double 9. No score. And he's busted score by going into double 14. That's a double win for Bruno, not only has his opponent missed, but he's got to go back to 87. Two darts here for Bruno. Yeah, careless from Ratajski, that really. 36. And I think Sturkey will be, I think, grateful that Ratajski is back on 87. So back to the seven scenes. Just a single this time. Double five. Full Gets away with it. Tide is up nicely, and you can almost hear a pin drop. Said Christoph needed to have a big leg on the Bruno throw. And right 99. on cue, he's now got Christoph six darts. Yeah, he's stolen the darts in this one. In position, especially now. Trouble 15 would have left the bullseye. Uh, sorry, would have left tops. 93. Forty-three. Reserve required fifty-two. Well, he's trimmed off the forty-three to leave a shot at one forty. But uh, Ratajski, you'd fancy him from here. Thirty-two with two darts. Although the finishing was a little bit once or found wanting before, wasn't it? Bruno, you require one hundred and four. Well, leg number four. Bruno missed two darts to get comfortable, and then Ratajski stepped in and finished it off. Bruno not going to return the favour unless Ratajski misses again. Well, this is it. He's had nine. Nut Missed darts at a double now. He'll, he'll want to put a lid on that, I think. That's 10. That's 11. And that's Eight. 12. Now, this is becoming a concern for Ratajski because all of a sudden he should have put this one to bed a long time ago. And Sturkley is in position now on 55. And he may well snatch this. It, again, only a hold of throw, but it could be very significant indeed. And he gets it as well. That one has slipped through the fingers of Christoph Ratajski. That treble 20 bed as well. And Ratajski's looking at a big, big finish if he gets the chance. If he gets the chance. 107. Christoph, you require 167. This starts at double 14 for a 5-3 lead, but this has to go and it's not going to go. And Sturkley. 131. Bruno, you require 14. Looking at double seven for a break of throw. Now that's the problem. He's come inside and he's busted no score. score as well. That is pretty unforgivable. 36. And that may well come back to haunt him. There's Ratajski on double 18 at times. Oh, he's gone next door. It's okay. Just needs to tidy up. Double 17.
two. Well, well, well. The tide turns once again. The balance of power shifts the way of the Swiss. Uh, he's come inside. Now, don't miss the big number. Ten. Christophe requires 34. Straight for it. Christophe now one more dart in hand. That's a long way off. Miles away. Absolutely miles away. And Sturkley, I don't think he can believe it, that he's got an opportunity. And he's taken it, and he's won the last two legs by throwing 40 darts. But my goodness me, what an opportunity this is to mark his European Tour debut with a win. This is the hardest bit, though, now. When you can see the opportunity, you can see the story. The story that we're trying to paint of the opportunity that this could provide. And it's so, so close now for Bruno. Oh, uh, it's within touching distance. He can almost smell it. 54 for 32. 59. When he returns, and he may well have six darts at this because Ratajski is on 143. 68 away. Just having a quick look to see where Ratajski is as well. Yeah, and decided 54. not it's to be too aggressive. Interesting. Let's see if Ratajski can punish. No, he can't. He obviously didn't fancy Christoph Ratajski to take it out, and he'd probably be right on the balance of play so far. But this is match Bruno darts for Bruno. 32. Well, what an astonishing storyline this would be to mark day one of our first ever PDC tournaments in Switzerland. Bruno Sturgley, the qualifier, the World Cup participant from Frankfurt this year, gives the crowd in Basel an absolute treat on day one. And look at the reaction, and listen to the reaction as well. Yeah, and of course he did stuff on the uh, WDF circuit as well. And I think, yeah, by the end of that year, I think it was a fairly, I think he was a fairly obvious candidate to win a tour card at Q School. Now then, Mike, what you got here? Didn't need to go for it anyway. I thought it might have crossed his mind anyway, just to try and inject some impetus into his veins, but all on 194. Yeah, nice 36. effective use of the uh, 18s there just to uh, impose himself. Double nine here for the Decker. Could be a problem. And it is a problem. 27. Graham, you require 60. We just saw a big favourite in Christoph Ratajski go down six legs to three. That was the problem in that game. Missed doubles. Are we getting a bit of a repeat here? Just look on the face of uh, Graham Hall. And 40. I've got to say, he never looked really settled at any stage, though. He just looked a little bit anxious, a little bit edgy. No score. And what is going on here with Graham the Decker here? One for 20. double four, and he's hit a single 20. And Graham Hall, I don't think, can believe that he's got this opportunity for a 2 0 lead. Not for the first time this game as well, Mike Decker making that slip on the big numbers. He's on the second leg, Graham Hall. Graham Hall says Third thank you very much. Two. I think the big disappointment, though, was Antwerp, where he was playing in front of his home crowd Whoa. as he rattles in a 180 for good measure. Nice. And he had that 4-0 lead against Ross Smith, and he lost it 6-5. And the crowd were really up for it. And he just sensed that the Decker, you know, he could have really gone on a big run that weekend, but it all just came crashing down, and, and that was that. And he was bitterly dejected as he, as he came off the stage. And little wonder as well. 46 away. Sensibly going for the 6-10 route, and all of a sudden, a 107 checkout and a 106 checkout back-to-back, -back and Mike the Decker very much in business once again. Looking at the 19s here from 265, Hall is already down to a finish of 170. Great use of the 19s as well, though. Brilliant oh, use of the 19s from Mike the Decker. 
Oh, that's devastating stuff. Graham Hall, I think this might have to go. Will it go? It's the second time Dedeck has landed a big blow like that. He hit the maximum earlier to leave the 106. Now a maximum on the 19s. This to put himself a leg away from round two. Gets the 54. Two bites at tops for Dedeca. Only needs the one. And it's five on the spin now. Well, that could be the last start that Graham Hall throws this weekend in competitive action. Double 16 for Dedeca to round things off with a 12 darter. 20. Graham, you require 82. I think Graham Hall had started putting his darts away there, but he's back on the hockey and he's still involved. You wouldn't have blamed him the way De Deck has been finishing this game, but all turn around and it's got to start somewhere. It could be starting here, double 16 for Graham Hall. Of a late last opportunity. And that might be the last start he gets to throw. Yeah, well, Mike, require 32. two match starts have come and gone already for Mike Dedeca. How many more will he need? Well, there's another one that's fallen by the wayside. There's another as well. And this double eight will have to be switched over to the other side of the hockey. And he still can't find a way through. So that's five missed match starts for Mike Dedeca. And Graham Hall wipes his brow once again. Well, Mike Dedeca can see the funny side. He almost Mike, you require eight. Almost apologised as he stepped back up here. Graham Hall, a shake of the head, knows surely now that Dedeca, with his sixth match dart, won't fluff his lines this time. Seven match darts have come and gone. No, well, well, well. I am staggered. Absolutely staggered. Graham, you required two. Just remember about... 90 seconds ago, we were getting excited about a nine dart possibility. <laughs> we're now still going after 18. No score. Yeah, seven perfect darts. Require eight. The last 11 have been anything but. And the crowd are beginning to play their part as well as Mike De Decker targets. The meeting with Ross Smith once again on the European. That was a mile inside as well. But hey, finally, so finally, match with his 10th match start, Mike Dedeka breathes a little bit of a sigh of relief to get over the line in that one. I don't think he was in the mood for another leg there. But a 140 just to apply some pressure. Rasmus, though, looking to respond, and he certainly responds very well indeed. Uh, E-darts, is that anything that you're familiar with, uh, Mats? Electronic darts, the, the format of the game that Failman's had some success in. He was a European finalist on uh, one, one occasion one, in 2011. Very popular across Europe, America, Asia. Game oh. shot the second leg, Manal's run. Asma certainly justifying his status as the favourite for this one and looking to make a bit of an impression here as well as he tries to get back into this leg. Failman looking at 1 2 4. But this is where that winning percentage yeah, really comes it. into play. When you start losing or someone starts hitting big things against you, when you're used to winning, you don't start to panic, you hit back. That's what Failman's doing here. Looking good for a holder throw. He's going to get opportunities. Rasma ready to pounce. Great use of the bullseye as well. If he gets the opportunity. 48 away. Double 14. Yeah, Sticks it right in the bottom Alex corner. Fell. Not many people go that route on a 48 with two darts, but it works out very nicely for Fell. Even it was Hertig who came through that bracket that involves Stefan Belmont. Anyway, Fellman looking at 161. This would raise the roof, but it's not going to happen. Marcel Valpen, I think, is the, uh, the big hope, but he plays 41. Nathan Aspinall. 156. Which depends on how Aspinall is uh, feeling. 
and how well he plays tonight. I think he may have a little bit of a problem, but we'll see. We're going to get to see if Ailman finally convert the 120. This for the third time. And a repeat of the, si the situation earlier on, a 120 to break the throat. And a repeat of the situation again that he gets a dart at tops. History repeating again. He's pulled that final dart way low. He's had numerous opportunities, three opportunities now for the Shanghai. And once again, he's pulled it low. Rasma looking at double 20. Maybe this is how you do it, Alex. Just inside double 10. Alex, you required. Well, a rare miss from Madars Rasma has given Failman the opportunity. The crowd can sense it. Failman can sense it, just taking an extra moment. Trying to compose himself. And delivers. Well, he made full use of that time, didn't he? That was really good play by Alex Failman. And they are the darts that can make a difference. Was switching over to the 18 there to try and set himself up on the finish. Something Madoz Rasma has done very successfully after 12 darts down to a simple two. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to say as well, not for the first time today, that, that final dart, he's, he's just got the timing wrong on the release. And Switzerland, as we know, is all about precision oh, timing, and Failman hasn't been able to find it on two or three occasions. Rasma looking at tops. And yeah, Rasma looking oh, at one more leg to get him through. Alex. Yeah, I think he was there for the taking. Yeah, I think maybe regret in regards to the direction it appears the result is going, but maybe be quite oh, proud in regards to the performance that he's managed to put in here. With an average of around about 90. That's nine points better than his seasonal stats. And he's given a player who's been inside the world's top 32 for... Good period of time. No mighty scare. Yeah, that's the other thing as well. Failman last night in his final qualifier only needed an average of 80 to get the job done. He won 6-1, so who knows? Maybe an average of 75 would have been enough. But suddenly you, you, you need to make a... You need to put 15... 55. 20 points on that, don't you? So it's a heck of a heck of a leap overnight. But as you say, the fact that he's put in an average of 87 is encouraging. As Rasma looks to tidy things up. Oh, double six. For the match. Game shot. Unorthodox. But it's one way to do it. Double 20, double six to round things off for Maros Rasma, who sees the funny side of that one. Caught us a little bit by surprise, but Rasma all smiles as he celebrates his birthday yesterday and he wipes his brow as he gets the better of Alex Fairman, who I think will look back on that as a, a moment to be proud of, but then again, maybe tinged with a little bit of regret that he couldn't make life a little bit more difficult. Vincent van der Voort threw a nine dancer on the same day as well in his first round win over Mensur. Gilding's perfection coming in against Vessel Nyman as well. 6 1 win. 140. Averaged 114 that uh, match as well. But then lost in round three against Lou Littler. Been putting in some good performances as the Andrew Gilding this year. The questions really was after winning that UK Open, it sort of put him on a, another playing field and could he live with that level of expectation? Well, he's starting to get deeper runs in the big TV majors, a quarter finalist this year, the world match play. And Peter Wright, Christopher Tyski before going out to MVG. And Gilding has effectively 100 points from here in his hands to work with moving forward and he can make a further giant inroad here as well and he fills it up for good measure and having had that horror show of a 24 data gilding may well respond with an 11 data to go five up the yin and the yang so far for gilding 13 data 24 data potential 11 data there's a little bit of everything here from gilding so far however it's coming it's all about gilding Tops was good in the main. Double 10 was a problem last time. 21. 
That's the problem with double 20. If you don't hit it first time, Andrew, you have to go to double 10. If you're not good on double 10, it can create openings. But Prej, once again, really struggling. 57, and you require 20. Another troubleless visit when he needed something to at least threaten. Yeah, on the fifth leg, Andrew. And in the end, it's a 13 data. Yeah, I mean, he could be a good project for somebody if uh, somebody wants to take him under their wing and give him a bit of guidance or a bit of instruction. But I think the experience of being on the stage will, will do in the world of good. I think he can just try and lose sight of the, the scoreline and, and, as you say, just focus on the... Andrew, you require 130. One or two positives that have come out of this. Now, will Gilding finish with a flourish on 130? Bullseye. 105. Not quite. I know you require 92. Chance to get a leg on the board. All comebacks have to start somewhere. They could be here. Yeah, an ironic raised eyebrow there from Nandor Prej because he knows that trebles have deserted him and when it looks all in vain he's, he's managed to pull one out there to set up two opportunities at double 16 to get on the scoreboard eyes on the prize 84 and you require and that 25 just about sums up his day so far zero from 10 and gilding steps in looking at double 12 and now looking at a place in the second round where Andrew Gilding keeps his dream alive as far as World Grand Prix qualification is concerned. He'll take on Rob Cross tomorrow, maybe still a little bit more to do, and that actually could wrap up his place in the European Championship as well. This thing's currently stand in that particular race, including the prize money that he would be due to get as things stand from the Players' Championship Finals and the World Championships. Ryan Meikle would be positioned 64 of 64 before those major events are played. And when you look at some of the players behind, like Bessel Nyman, Connor Scott, Wesley Plazier, all playing big darts, and you'd expect them to pick up some wins in those big TV events. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Meikle's made a, relatively speaking, a bit of a burst there. 80. Ryan, you require 107. And he's down to a finish first after 12 darts, looking at 107. Double 16 to leave tops. Yeah, Nicely finished off. Yeah, we had that situation last week in the uh, Hungarian darts trophy where we had two host nation qualifiers playing each other in the first round. Yeah, and Bejian won it 6-4 against Andres Shoka. 58. And he did so with an average of 67.66, so it was only a week ago. Now, I wasn't in Budapest, and I didn't keep an eye on every game last weekend, and that's why it slipped my mind. That's in my defence, anyway. 100. Many good things about Switzerland. The flag's a big plus. Well, this would be a big plus, wouldn't it, for Roger Hurtig? Roger requires 78. Opportunity to take the lead for the first time in the game. Oh, he's hit the tops. A double ten. Doesn't matter, Roger, you can still do it. And he has done it. Couldn't buy a double in leg two, but he's produced a double-double there. No real problem there with the winning legs, is there, from Brian Meikle, or within that sort of six visits, which is probably what he'd have eyed up before coming up here. Thought, if I can be out in six visits, I'm going to win this game comfortably. Yeah. 125, Ryan, you're 161. I mean, if Meikle does win this and we hear from him on stage, I think it could be quite an illuminating conversation with uh, Philip Brzezinski, actually. Winner of this to face Ryan Searle in the second round tomorrow. And I've got to say on the evidence of this, I don't think Ryan will be having any sleepless nights tonight, whoever he comes through to face him. 
49 or in your corner 36. Would love to take this out. Nice clean take, 13 data, statements of intent. Could be. Could have been the best leg of the match so far. As it is, 18. on we go. Seen this kind of leg before. Yeah, you come inside on double nine and then all of a sudden. 100, or you require 18. Opposition having chipped away gets into position. And he has come inside on double nine, so only one more dart at a double. And it's at double four. 14. And he's nudged the wire on that one as well. Well, it's astonishing. Mikkel, not long ago, was looking at a potential 13 data. As it is, he might well lose this one as well. Hurtig could hit back and break back straight away for a second break of throw. Single nine to leave 73. Treble 19 to leave double eight. 66. Well, that would have been highly unorthodox, but it is a missed at a double for a 5-3 lead. Getting desperate now for Ryan Meikle, and he gets it. Survived a dart, a big dart missed there by Roger Hurtig. A little slip with that final dart, but still potentially just two darts away. Meikle needs to play catch-up and he needs to play a very smart game here. 43, Roger requires 74. Well, the crowd find their voice. Roger Hurtig, is that treble nine? Forty-seven away. Forty-seven, yes. This builds the frustration up for Ryan Meikle. Double sixteen, match start. Forty-two goes begging. Hit and hope time for Ryan Meikle. Needs a couple of big trebles to cause that bit of angst. 100. Well, that Roger might not be enough 32. anyway. Roger Hurtig has already missed one match start at double 16. Three more clear opportunities for what would be a truly astonishing victory on the European Tour. Yeah. And Roger Hurtig raises the roof in Basel. He wins it with an average of 74. Somehow somehow getting the better of Ryan Meikle, who played nowhere near his level today in that one. But Roger Hurtig opening in things up with a 32 dart led to level things up in the second. Seals it with a 17 darter. And despite missing 19 darts at a double, he joins fellow Swiss Bruno Sturtley in round two here in Basel. Glut of either round one or, or round two defeats. Been a while since he went deep in a Euro Tour event. The final session on the final day on the Sunday. And we talked about that Rids explosive scoring and, and there we see the, the injection of the 180. And after nine darts, he's down to a finish of 90. Potential 11 data incoming. And for the double-double, but it's just a single 18 and a single 14 as well to leave a shot at tops if he gets the opportunity. It's been an injection of pace in this game as well from Brendan Dolan. Certainly when he starts throwing the darts, the process, the approach play has been very subdued, but sort of matching the Callan Ridd's pace, letting Callan run Callan with that, where I do expect to see that change throughout the game. Brendan Dolan, one of the tricky customers who can play darts at various paces. Double 10 with the final dart in hand as Dolan threatened on 57. Full calendar. One hundred and forty. The form, though, has not quite been there, has it, for Brendan Dolan? You know, just one win from his seven matches this month. It's Twelve of his last thirteen games.
Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, nobody wants that sort of form going into a tournament, but we've seen it time and time again where players can just suddenly switch and, and, and really put things right quite dramatically. They seem to thrive in a bigger stage, maybe. This is promising for Ritz as he looks to threaten. It's 42 for Dolan. Especially this time of year, because this is the time of year that players will just a you know, little bit of extra practice. The big money is, and the big ranking positions will change. 26. No changing Callan in the fortunes here for Brendan Dolan and Callan Rids. A chance for a double breaker throw. Put himself halfway to victory. Yeah, he's been visit perfect so far, has uh, Callan Rids. And he's visit he's perfect again. Feels like Dolan just trying to take a little bit of a sting out of the pace of the game right now. <laughs> Whilst adding a bit of a sting at the same time with that 180 just to keep Callan Rids looking Indeed. over his shoulder. There's the helicopter in full flight here in Basel. One hundred. This is where Callan just needs to keep that aggression. Mention all the time how close excitement and nerves are in regards to how 57. they feel. Renier one hundred and twenty-one. Brendan Dolan needs a couple of breaks of throw. This could be one of them. It won't be on this occasion. Forty-five. Callan Euro 167. Yeah, a little bit of self admonishment there from Dolan. Ritz. Well, the 167 is not going to happen, so Dolan. 97. With. Brendan Euro 76. A great opportunity to get the first or his first break of throw. Ritz with two of his own. 36. Callan, you require 70. Yeah, a bit of a let off there for Rids, but he still needs to pick up the pieces here with 70. That leaves double eight. And he's. Rids stealing the darts here. Well, not just stealing them. It's an absolute smash and grab from Callan Rids. He's absolutely mugged Brendan Nolan there. 16. you require 106. Match starts incoming, maybe, should be, should be, Game. and it's second. And, and Callan Rids finishes things off in style, banishing the demons of last week in Budapest to an extent there. No real threat of a fight back on this occasion from Brendan Dolan. Excellent game management on this occasion from Callan Rids. Some really nice touches here and there as well. The finishing in the main was pretty good and a nice way to wrap things up as well as he finishes things off with a checkout of 106 to set up a meeting in round two tomorrow against Jan van Veen. Rids wins it 6-1.